If you clicked on my thumbnail, you probably think that this is clickbait. A chair convinced me to believe in God. Um, <clears throat> it's actually true. Here at What the Heaven, um, I'm kind of weird. That could maybe be my new slogan. I'm kind of weird. Welcome to What the Heaven. I'm kind of weird. And I want to share with you how a chair is basically the foundation for my life and my belief that it's reasonable to believe in God. And also, if you're a Christian, the logic I'm going to use might make you kind of offended. But please don't unsubscribe. That really hurts my score in the algorithm. Um, if you don't like this video, just never watch me again. Just don't don't unsubscribe. And also, also, this video is not going to use a lot of scripture because the person that um, requested this video, they requested it for someone who doesn't believe in God. And I don't want to be the person who's like, I believe in God. Why? Because God said so. Or they're like, I believe in the Bible. Why? Because the Bible says it's true. Well, how do you know the Bible's true? Because it says so. I'm not going to be like that. So as you watch this video, if you think about someone who doesn't believe in God or someone who's asked you why you believe in God, this would be a really great video to show them. My reasoning isn't actually a chair. It's actually, well, no, <laughs> it, it, it's a chair. Welcome to What the Heaven, where it's good to ask questions. Every week people send me in questions and those people are some pretty cool, some pretty hip young people, but today it's the opposite. I didn't get a question and I'm not gonna answer a question from somebody that's young and cool and hip. I'm gonna be answering a question or taking a request, it was more like it, from the parent of somebody young and cool and hip. Let's check out what they sent to me on Facebook Messenger. <laughs> you know as an old person because they sent me a message on Facebook. They said, my oldest teen isn't sure whether or not God exists. Could you make an episode about why you believe in God? Yes, I am so excited to do this because I love talking about this because I believe that what I'm gonna say is extremely reasonable. Also, I'm old and I love chairs. And that's the reason I'm sitting today in actually in my dining room. I know it looks like this is my game room. This is my dining room. I eat dinner next to my collection of like 200 board games. Kind of weird. Um, but yeah, I'm sitting down because I believe in God because I believe in chairs. I know that's weird. Uh, let's stick around and figure this out. Before we get started, if you're tired of YouTube videos of Christians that every single week they talk about, is this person the Antichrist or is this the end of the world? Um, welcome, because that's not what I'm gonna talk about. I'm gonna talk about a chair. Please subscribe. Also, if you want to shoot me a question down in the comments down below or on Instagram, that would be great. I would love for you to inspire my next episode. If you like what you've seen so far, if you want to figure out what God, how a chair convinces me to believe in God, um, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. That would be great. All right, let's figure out what the heaven chairs have to do with God. What the heaven? The most important question in the world has nothing to do with religion. It actually has to do with knowledge. Why do you believe? what you believe. And this can be asked about, asked about anything. Why do you believe, I don't know, that you're human? Why do you believe that um, I'm drinking coffee? It's not coffee. Why do you believe your parents love you? Why do you believe your spouse loves you? Why do you believe that when you throw something, it will fall down? Why do you believe that what I'm saying is even trustworthy? Am I trustworthy? And speaking about trustworthy, I have 253 subscribers right now. That means that 253 people um, think that I'm trustworthy or at least entertaining enough to listen to what I have to say about God. So why, really, why do you think that I'm trustworthy? Is it because I'm old? Or is it because I'm young? I don't know what I am. Is it because I'm white? Is it because I wear flannel and a hat in every single episode? Everything you believe, you believe for a reason. And now when it comes to God, whether he's real, whether he's not, whether he's fake, wh wh whether he was invented or he's just a product of, of, you know, wishful thinking. Why do you believe what you believe? For relaxing times, have some coffee. No one, I, no one that watches this is going to get that reference. If you get this reference, uh, let me know. So here's where I might make some Christians upset. I teach a class on epistemology, that's the study of knowledge. And what I've learned is that you can't be 100% certain about anything. To quote Morpheus, how do you actually know that it's air that you're breathing? How certain are you that we're not just living in a computer simulation? You might be, you might be certain but you can't be 100% certain. What happens after you die? Everybody has an opinion, but when we live our lives based on that opinion, but nobody really knows for sure, and this is where I might make some Christians mad, but it's totally true. We cannot be absolutely 100% sure 
that God exists. Let me say that one more time. We can't be absolutely sure that God exists. So I can't prove to you that God exists. But what I can tell you is why I believe that God does exist. I'm gonna tell you why I believe what I believe. And it all has to do with this chair. Not like, not, not this chair, just like any chair. So why I believe what I believe, it all has to do with this $2,000 chair. My, my favorite author, his name is Malcolm Gladwell, and he wrote this um, book that talked about the company Herman Miller, and they designed like the world's greatest chairs or something. And they designed this chair, and I'm gonna show it now, and this, this chair inspired so many chairs that we have now. And this chair still costs $2,000. But here's the thing, if I get it, eventually that chair is gonna break. And I know that because every chair that I've ever seen eventually breaks. I'm sitting on this terrible chair right now. It's partially broken. Um, I sit on expensive chairs and I sit on cheap chairs. And, and one truth that I know is that eventually every chair is going to break. I work at a school in the entire school, every single classroom, every single office. We have these plastic blue chairs. They're not, they're not nice, they're not bad. They're just, they're just plastic blue chairs. And like once or twice every year, a boy, it's always a boy. A boy will just lean back a little bit too far and pop, just snap the back of the chair. And sometimes he'll fall off, sometimes he'll catch himself on a desk, and he's totally embarrassed. Owen, if you're watching, I'm thinking about you. When I was learning to become a teacher, I um, had this black executive chair that I shared with another teacher that shared my classroom. And let's just say that she was a rather large person. And so one day I'm teaching and I say, all right guys, get to work. And I lean back and the chair snaps because it was very worn out from my teaching partner. And I actually did a backflip in front of the entire class and landed on my head because I broke the chair. Because no matter how nice the chair is, every chair can break. And so I read this book about the Herman Miller Aeron chair, and I'm not gonna lie. Um, even though I know chairs can break, I really, really want this chair. Maybe because it's like the ultimate flex to own a $2,000 chair, but here's where it gets real. Expensive chair, cheap chair, big chair, small chair, recliner, sofa, whatever you sit on, we know that they can break, but we sit on them anyway. And why do we sit on chairs? Why do we sit on something knowing that they can break? Honestly, because of faith. Because you have faith in chairs. Mind blown. So I have these chairs from Walmart and they're really cheap. They cost like 10 bucks. And I look at them and even though they're flimsy, I think that it won't break. It could, but when I think about it, it probably won't break. Therefore, I decide I'm gonna sit on a chair. I know, you think that I'm crazy, but welcome to What the Heaven, I'm kind of weird. You think this is stupid, but you're the one still watching. So what does this have to do with God? Here's where it gets real. I can't prove to you that God exists. I can't prove to you that any chair won't break, but I can have a reasonable level of certainty that God exists. Just like I can have a reasonable amount of certainty that any chair that I sit on is probably going to hold my weight. There is enough evidence that this that, that, that all of the existence, everything that we call creation, the entire universe, that it was created by a creator. I believe that it was created by the Judeo-Christian Yahweh. And if you think that's dumb, Pawnee is literally the greatest town in the country. Literally, literally, literally. There's literally nothing in this world that you cannot do. Literally. Literally, every explanation for creation and existence requires using faith. If you believe that God created the universe, why do you believe what you believe? And if you think that the universe is random, that it was all created at random by an event out of nothingness, why do you believe what you believe? No matter how you answer those questions, you are using faith. Do you trust someone smarter than you? You're having faith in that person. Do you trust scientific facts? You're having faith that those facts are trustworthy. So why do you believe what you believe. You cannot answer that question about creation without using some level of faith. For example, there's this theory called simulation theory. Elon Musk believes in this, and they believe that it is very, very likely, not certain, but they think it is more likely than not that everything we call um, creation, 
everything we call reality is actually a computer program. He can't prove it, but he has a reasonable level of certainty. This mathematician believes that everything in existence is made up of numbers and that together we are a massive equation. That's what I call faith. <laughs> so when it comes down to it, I look at a chair and I have faith every time I sit down that it's not gonna break. And in the same way, when I think about the existence of God, when I think of somebody who created everything, I see that there are reasons for him and I see that there are reasons against him. But there are a few reasons that make me believe personally, this just works for me, that it is reasonable to believe that God exists. I, there are three and I'm gonna tell you all three. First of all, scientists and mathematicians do agree about the extreme unlikelihood of a random Big Bang occurrence not being from a creator. You can still say that it could happen, but it actually takes more faith to believe in a random creation event that comes out of nothingness than it takes to believe that a creative being created everything that exists today. To uh, quote some white guy, apologetics guy, he says, I don't have enough faith to be an atheist. And I kind of get that. Secondly, only college freshmen and really angsty teenagers who wear a bunch of black, only people like that believe that Jesus of Nazareth never existed at all. Historians who, who, who doubt everything about Christianity, they still, they still know that the Jesus of history, that he existed. Now, was he God? Was he crazy? Was he a lunatic? Was he a person who just wanted a political rebellion? You can disagree on all of that, but we know that he existed. And now I'm gonna to prove to you that Jesus was God. No, I, I'm just kidding, I can't do that. If you, if you thought so, you're not watching this video. If a guy claims to be God and then gets killed, and then for the 2,000 years that follow, people are willing to die because of that guy, you, you know, he might have been telling the truth. Again, um, you can't deny the fact that Jesus existed. And you can't deny the fact that people, even till this day, are willing to die for that man. That really convinces me that it's reasonable to believe that Jesus was God, and if Jesus was God, then he comes from the God who created the universe. And the third reason is you, or or me, or or maybe your mom, maybe the woman who, um, yeah, 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 maybe the woman who inspired this episode. The third reason that I believe that God exists is I have seen people's lives changed, and the only thing that explains it is the God of the Christian Bible. You can ask my wife, I'm a pretty big pessimist, I'm a downer, and for the most part, I just believe that people don't change. But the thing is, I have seen people change. It's rare, but it happens. And, and when I see them change and give God credit, the, the, the change that they have, I have to believe that God is responsible for that change. So you could call it God, you could call it conditioning, you could call it psychology, you, you, you could say that it's drugs. I think it's more reasonable when a person said, God changed my life, to believe them when they say, God changed my life. You might disagree with me, but I have a reasonable amount of certainty that God did change their lives. So those are the three reasons that I believe what I believe. I believe that you can't have absolute certainty on everything, but that everything we believe takes some amount of faith to believe him. I believe that God created everything that we call existence. But am I certain? Absolutely not. But to be honest, I'm also not certain that we aren't living in the Matrix and that the 1999 film The Matrix starring Keanu Reeves directed by the Wachowskis, what if that was just like a red herring to throw us off the track and they actually told us the truth knowing that the truth was so extreme that we wouldn't believe it anymore but that actually is the truth and we really are slave batteries in the real world and the machines are living on us. Um, that actually could be true and that terrifies me and um, I can't totally prove that that's not what's actually happening. Some Christians will say stuff counter to what I said. They will say, I believe 100% that God exists. I've never doubted that God exists. And my answer to that is, cool bro, um, I'm happy for you. And honestly, um, I don't trust people like that. Maybe I'm just evil, maybe it's because I'm a pessimist. But if a person has never doubted God's existence, um, they haven't really talked to many people in their lives. A lot of Christians won't admit this, but I will. There are many good reasons to not believe in God. 
But as a Christian, I believe that there are more reasons to believe in God. And I think they're all, I think they're all better than the reasons to not believe. And I find it more reasonable to believe that all of this came from a creator than it is to believe that all of this something came from nothing from a random event. That just seems crazy to me but it may not be crazy to you, and that's okay. So I wanna thank you so much for watching, and, and, and just tell me down below, why do you believe what you believe? Thanks, I'll see you next time. I'm having too much fun making B-roll.